Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. My name is Kelly and this is my dog Xander. And this channel is all about teaching you how to create print on demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. Uh, so in today's video, I thought I would do a follow up to the Redbubble video that I made earlier. This one is gonna go over how to do some of those all over print designs. It's really easy. It's gonna be a little bit like my last all over print video, but that one I did specifically um, with Printful. So this one, very similar, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it with Redbubble as well. So usually with the all over print designs, what we're looking at is a square design. So on Canva here, I'm gonna go up to create a design. And then for my dimensions, I'm gonna come down here to custom size. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pick, you know, a nice big square. So usually I'll do something like 3000 by 3000 pixels. I think you can even do 4000 by 4000 pixels. Let's see. I know Canva has a limit to how, you know, big a design can be, but yep, there we go. So right now this one is 4000 by 4000 pixels, which is gonna be a nice big design and it's square. And so now what I'm gonna do is come up to elements. And then from here, I'm just gonna look for seamless patterns. And it's gonna come up with a ton of seamless patterns. And you know, you can do so many different seamless patterns. And so I'm just gonna go hopefully really quick and just show you a couple different ways to do this. And I, I did do two different things. Um, I did do two different things that I wanted to show you. One was sort of a quilt style design. Is this all over print? Just making sure you gotta make sure that the edges all match up. Okay, it looks like they do. Um, and I can keep it white or I can do a different background here. So again, I can change the background. Let's say I wanted to do a baby blue. Uh, maybe something like that. Maybe I wanted to make it really light and gray, something like that. This is not the best design, but there you go. That's how you would go ahead and do it and get that all over print. I want to look for something a little bit better than that. I did lose my train of thought here. I was saying I was going to show you one that was an all over print like this, and then one that was more of a quilted design. And a quilted design is also really cool. It's a little bit different and I'll show you both techniques here. Let's see if I can find anything else that's a little cooler than the flowers. Not that the flowers aren't, you know, they're okay. Is this one actually all over print? Oh yeah, this one is. This one will work. I like this. It's sporty. Sporty is cool. Let's see. So you got to make sure that you go edge to edge. You don't want any gaps around the edges. So once you get it on there, you shouldn't be able to move it. So you know it's filled the entire background if you can't move it. If you can move it, you might not have gotten it to completely fill the background. Make sure that you don't have any gaps around the edges because if you do, when you go to pattern it, that's when you will end up with lines going through your design. So you make sure that you're completely edge to edge and a nice smooth cutoff because you want it to everything to line up perfectly. So this is a great example right here. And I am just gonna put this as a sports pattern. And so this one, I can go ahead and we'll just download this one as is. So I'm gonna download this. I don't want it to be a transparent background. So it's just a PNG and I can download just like that. And so this was the first example that I wanted to show you and I'll give you a second to download. Perfect. And then I wanted to show you, I'm just going to detach this from the backgrounds here and I can get rid of that. And I wanted to show you one more example. And to do that one, I wanted to do sort of a quilt pattern. So different ways I can do a quilting pattern. I can keep with my seamless patterns, which work well, or for this one, I kind of want to do plaids. And so I can do a different plaid. Um, so different styles. What I want to do is create um, four, uh, four squares on here and I want them all to be the same size. So for this, I'm going to use my rulers and guides at the top of the page and the side of the page. If you don't have these pulled up, it's real easy. If you come over here to file at the top and you come down to show rulers and guides, you want to make sure that's clicked. That way you can get your rulers and guides. And I'm just gonna pull a midline down right there and it'll turn pink when I'm right at the middle. And then I'm gonna pull a sideline over and I'm gonna do the same thing. 
So now I know where my four squares are, and then I'm just gonna pick four plaid patterns and put them in those squares. And you can do anything that you want to do. Um, give it whatever look you want to. Yep. Cool thing about these is it is, a, it is going to be sort of a, um, a quilted look, which means that you're gonna have hard edges in between the different designs. So it's not a, one of those seamless patterns. This is absolutely gonna have seams, which also means that you can do, you know, pretty much anything you want that, that looks like it's gonna work because they're all gonna have seams. So as long as the colors look like they kind of go together, Again, it doesn't matter that that goes over the edge because I am gonna have seams there. So I can do all reds or I can do reds and blacks. I can do whatever style of design I want. If I want it to be a little bit more Christmassy, I can throw some ones with greens in here and bring that down like that. Sometimes I like to do here because these are more of the square pattern and this is more of the diamond pattern so it would look good if I got a diamond pattern here <clears throat> so here's a diamond pattern that might look good but we are going with a little bit more of reddish tones so I kind of want to stay sort of in that area with the reddish tones and here's one that does the little diagonal here and so I could do something like this would be one example. Um, you might, you know, take a while and look and, and figure out which, which ones you want. You can try to make them all go, or you can try to make them all, I don't want to say clash, but you can, you can try to make them all a little bit more distinct. Here's some if I wanted to go a little bit more with some Christmassy type colors. I could do more of a Christmassy type one. So that looks kind of cool there. What else do I have that's a little bit Christmassy? Here's a diamond checkered one. That might look kind of cool. Where might I like that? So those kind of look interesting. And you can try a bunch of different ones out. Here's ones that are all green. Here's ones that are green and red. Oops, that's okay. I moved my lines, that's okay. I think I know where they are. And again, I don't wanna to take too much time playing with this right now because I just wanna show you the design style, but you get the idea. You could definitely play with this for a while trying to figure out what it is exactly that you want and, and all of that. I mean, there's a lot of just really cool Cool styles, cool ways that we can go about doing this. So let's do something like this. Okay, I've picked my four different plaids, so this is gonna give me that quilted look, and I'm just gonna go ahead and call this sort of a Christmassy colored quilted look. I could even, if I really wanted to make it Christmassy, put little silhouettes on top of this, and I could show you what I mean here if I wanted to just go back and do Christmas and go with some graphics here. I mean, I could do things like, oh, here's a silhouette and I could put it in this corner and maybe I go ahead and make it white so that it stands out here. Oops, that didn't make it white, why not? Okay, it doesn't wanna make it white, Never mind. Let's see if I can find another one. It says it's white, <clears throat> one sec. Nope, okay, maybe not that one, but some more magic recommendations. Is it gonna let me make any of these white here? No, it's not liking me. It's not letting me change the colors for some reason. Might just be, might just be glitching. That's fine too. But you can see how if I wanted to, assuming it would ever let me change the color, I don't know why it's giving me trouble right now. Okay, well, I don't know, it's giving me some trouble right now, but you could definitely see how if I wanted to, I could put different silhouettes in each of these boxes and really give it like a Christmassy look. I could do snowflakes, I could do a Christmas tree, I could do any kind of, 
desktop sort of design that I wanted to. Again, I don't know why it is not letting me change the colors here. It should, but for some reason, the color is not changing, even though it says it's on white. Okay. Well, I'm not sure why that's happening now. It's just being a booger. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this Christmas quilt pattern. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and download this one too, as is. And so now I've got two different examples to show you. And so we'll go ahead and jump right over to Redbubble. And I'll kind of show you how you can do both of these and how they'll look. I'll give it one second here to upload. There we go. So I'm going to jump over to my Redbubble here. And from here, I'm just at Manage Your Portfolio. And I'm just going to go ahead and put Add New Work. Now, you can also copy some of the settings that you've had. So right here, you can copy existing work or you can upload new work. If you copy an existing work, it's going to save all of your settings. So if you've already got it set the way you want it, it's a big time saver to just go ahead and copy um, an existing work. And then you can just make little micro adjustments here or there um, versus starting all over. But I'm going to show you how you would start fresh. So if I was just going to go straight to upload new work, it's just going to start totally fresh. And it's going to allow me to go ahead and open up one of the designs I just made. And it's going to take a second to upload here. But we'll show you what we're going to do. Now, these all over print patterns look good, obviously, on the all over print designs. They will not look good on like a t shirt or a poster. You know, they're going to look good on some things and they're not going to look good on the others. So, so I'm not going to upload them to everything, but I do just want to show you on the different all over print um, style things. And so we'll give it one second to upload. I'll go ahead and put a quick title and tags in here. And so this one is going to be a sports sports let's say ball pattern sports ball pattern whatever and for tags yeah i can do obviously <clears throat> sports i can list all of the different balls i can put basketball basketball we got football we got a soccer we've got ball just in general uh, we got golf we got tennis there's bowling, um, there's hockey puck, there's even what looks like badminton, which I don't even know if I spelled right. Clearly I did not. Clearly don't know how to spell badminton. There it is, badminton. Uh, darts, darts was on there for some reason. Um, what else do we got here? Looks like there's a boxing one too, boxing glove, but okay, we'll put boxing. And we'll just go ahead. I think that's most of them right there. So we've just got the whole sports. I could put game day, right? I could put pattern. I could put kids or boys, because this looks like a little kids, boys design. And so any of those might look good. I could put player coach, fan. I think you're allowed up to 30 tags. So you do want to, you know, use as many tags as is appropriate. Um, if you can use all 30, that's great. Make sure you're not spam tagging or anything like that. Don't put in stuff that's irrelevant. Um, that just really annoys people. But, you know, try to make sure that it actually, you know, goes with, um, <laughs> with your design. For description, you know, that's, I mean, I could just put Again, kind of the title, sports ball pattern. I'm just gonna leave that alone there. So I've got sort of a basic thing. Now I probably, again, wouldn't put it on a shirt because it's just gonna look like one big blob on any of the not all over print things. So for here, I'm just gonna disable everything that it does not make sense to put it on. And I'm gonna make sure that I enable everything that it would look good on. So anything that's all over print, I can put it on. So let's start here. So right now it's all over print and it's here. I'm gonna bring the size down so that I get a good pattern. And now you'll see it just looks like a little square. And then from here I can put choose pattern. And so there's a regular grid and an offset grid. So if I just click regular grid, 
it should line all of these up now. So all it did was make a nice big pattern and then I can look here and see if that's the size I want. Once I'm here, I can play with the, the size. So if I scale it down, they're gonna be a lot littler. If I scale up, it's gonna be a lot bigger. And so here's where you kind of just wanna play with what looks good on the shirt. And then you can hit apply changes. And so you will go through these one by one. Um, it's all gonna be sort of the same idea. So I'll do it really quick here. But you can see how it would look on every product. Again, regular grid, so something like that. Um, and so some of them it's gonna look good, a little bit smaller, some it's gonna look good, a little bit bigger. Here's a dress, in case you want a sporty dress, why not? So there's your sporty dress. Probably wouldn't look good on a sticker, but you could totally do it on a phone case. I could keep it this big and just sort of highlight what's on here, or I could make it a little bit smaller and try to get all of them and then go back to the pattern again. And so here you can see I'm kind of seeing a little bit of everything if I do it that size. And so, I mean, like I said, we go one, one by one, enable all of these, and they're all gonna be the same idea. Um, once, you've, um, once you've done this once, you can just sort of save your settings, and then you would use pretty much the same settings going forward for all of your all over print stuff. Oops, regular grid. Uh, whenever you're doing this, you always want to make sure it's a regular grid, not offset grid. Offset grid, when you do this, is going to offset it, so now you're going to have a line going through. So this does have to be regular grid. When you're um, just patterning one of your regular designs, it actually looks better on an offset grid. So if I just had one design and I was putting it in the pattern, then I would use the offset grid. But if I'm doing the seamless pattern, then I'm definitely going to use um, regular grid here. And so you can see, probably wouldn't do it on a card or a print. Definitely would do it on a laptop pouch. Oops, wrong one. Back to what I said about the grids, regular grid. The cool thing here is that when we get to things like the comforter or the shower curtain, the biggest I can make my design here when I've scaled it out all the way to 100 is only this big. So it's not even gonna cover the whole thing. So if I was trying to design for this, I probably wouldn't have a big enough image and I would probably end up with all this white, which is why doing the grid pattern is so convenient because I can easily make it when I do the grid as big as I need to. So it works really well on the comforters or any of the bigger items there. And so I can apply change. Um, I could do it, sure, let's do it on the dog mats. Dogs love balls and toys, so we'll just Keep going with the dog mats here. Yeah, that might look good by itself. Again, you can play with the size. So I think that looks good, bigger like that. I think that looks pretty good. But I mean, if you wanted to, you could really bring it down and make it a really fine pattern like that. And so it, it all comes down to preference. I think it looks better a little bit bigger like that. Um, pet blanket. Regular grid for pet blanket. Mugs, again, so the mug, um, you could or could not do it depending on what design. It's kind of an interesting looking design, but let's go ahead and bring it down. Now here's one of the examples I wanted to show you. Let's say that this was just one design and I put it on my mug like this. It would show up on the mug right on the side opposite the handle, which wouldn't look too good. Um, what you would need to do is design where you had one of your designs here and one of your designs here. Alternately, you could use the regular grid pattern. And even if it is just an individual design, the regular grid pattern will put it right next to it. So if you made it so that it was here and you used the grid pattern, it would put it here. So you just have to make sure you don't go too high up or too far down. And so the grid pattern actually can work pretty well when you're doing mugs. Um, just keep that in mind. Even if you do have just a regular design, looks really good on the all over print. Again, bring the size down a little bit. Apply changes, pet bandana. You can see how this can take a while to do the first time around, but then it does become a lot faster every time after that. 
because once we do it once, we'll just save all the settings. And I'll show you because I'll do it again and I'll copy the settings and I'll use my other one, um, my, my second design to show you. Uh, and so I can show you both ways real quick. I just gotta get all of these set and then I can save it and we'll reuse the, the, the sort of settings here. Regular grid. It looks good. The clocks are cool. One of the things with the clocks that I can change, by the way, is going to be the hand color and the frame color. So right now the default is white frame, white hand color. White hand color will probably look best. It gives you some choices. Frame color, you could do bamboo or black. Black would look good. White would look good. I might go with black because I tend to think that the darker colors look better there. And again, I'm going to do my pattern. And so it'll show up. Artboard prints. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do a print like that. Coaster, sure, it might look like a cool coaster. And I'll just leave it the, the size that fills the whole screen here. So it should automatically fill the whole thing. I shouldn't have to do anything. Blankets, sure. Again, bath mat might look cool in a little kid's bathroom. Choose pattern. Water bottle. Choose pattern. Mm, wouldn't do a wall mount, wouldn't do that. Probably wouldn't do the pin. Might do a mask. Anything that's gonna give it a nice all over print. You could do an apron, sure, why not? Probably wouldn't do a puzzle. Might do a tank top. Again, even if you don't think someone will buy it, if it makes sense to enable it, go ahead and enable it. So you should have most of the things enabled. Um, wallet. Almost there, pet bowl. So the pet bowl is a really long, like thin, thin cut. So for that, you would want it to be probably pretty small if you wanted to get most of the stuff on there. So I've still got my whole grid and I can, you know, pull it up or down depending on what I want, you know, to highlight. Oops. So maybe like that. And it'll give me the pet bowl there. And that looks pretty cool. Leggings. Regular grid. Socks. And so when we get to some of these weird shaped things like the socks, some of you did ask me about socks. Um, it'll show you sort of the pattern and the way that your design would fit over it. So if you really wanted your design um, specifically for the socks. One, I would need to design much bigger because I have this all the way at 100 and it still doesn't fill it. Um, two, you know, you might put like a line through here if you wanted a line at the top of the socks, you know. Um, but frankly, the easiest way to do the socks is always going to be a grid pattern. That's just the easiest way to do the socks and it'll do sort of a wraparound design like that. And that's how I do all of them is with the grid pattern. Um, backpack is another one where the settings on the backpack are a little funky. So you can see this is actually the front pocket here. This is going to be sort of the top and the sides of the bags. Here are gonna be some straps in the top of the bag here. So the way that your design would line up would be really funky. It'd be hard to design each individual spot. So a pattern really does look best, again, for the backpack as well. And this is one that you might, you know, make it a little bit smaller there so that you can look back up at the backpack and see how that would all look. Yep. Same thing here with the duffel bags. Again, something like that. Now remember when we're doing print on design, uh, print on demand, time is money. So you don't wanna spend too much time designing a thousand things that you know may or may not ever sell. I mean, when it comes to print on demand, it's a numbers game most of your designs won't sell. You know, maybe 10, 20% of the designs that you make will actually sell. That means usually somewhere around 80, 
sometimes even 90% of the designs you make don't sell at all. So you don't want to spend too, too much time on a design. Um, I do say spend a lot of time on a design if you're going to scale it out. If you're going to do one really good design and then you can scale it out to 100 different designs and make those really quick, then definitely make sure your first one's really good. Um, but if it's a design and you're not going to scale it, you know, don't spend too, too much time on it because time's money. Once we get down here, media, um, usually this is going to be digital art. If you've got different collections, you can put it in one of your collections. This would be sports. I think my sports collection is already full because it only allows you like a hundred designs per collection. I could also put it on patterns. I have a pattern collection here too. Default product, it says Optimize, recommend it, don't ever do that. Always pick what product you think it would look best on. So for example, I could put it on anything I wanted to, and I'm gonna look to see, well, what do I think it might look good on? What did I mostly design it for? It might look really good on like a comforter for a kid's bedroom or something like that. So let's say I wanna come down here and pick comforter. There you go. Um, you always check no, no nudity or lingerie or adult contact. If you do, you can't have it on kids' clothing. You also can't have it on masks. And then I have the right to sell this. All the stuff on Canva you're allowed to sell. I do have a caveat. I should have gone ahead and made some alterations to the design. And to do that would be really easy. It could be something as easy as putting on a filter or changing the saturation or the contrast a little bit. Any type of you know slight variation you can make to the photo or if you were to add you know, like some of those silhouettes or something over the top or anything like that. There's a lot of different ways that you can change it. I just did this really quickly to sort of show you how you would go about doing that. I am gonna save it though, because I do wanna show you how I would then copy the settings. So I'll give it a second to save. And it's usually not that long. Alrighty. Perfect, here we go. And so it's gonna show you what that would look like on all the products. I always go ahead and scroll through here and make sure everything looks good and that I didn't make any mistakes or anything needs to be edited. So it's always a good idea to go through and look at everything and make sure that it looks perfect. And then once it does, then I'll just, you know, go ahead and go back to my, um, back to my uh, manage settings. If I need to edit it, I'll edit it now and I'll just hit edit, but it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna come back up to accounts and I'm just gonna go back to manage portfolio here. And once I'm at manage portfolio, now I've got my sports ball pattern. And now all I have to do, if I come to the right hand corner, I can click that and I can put copy settings. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna make a copy of my design. Now my original is still safe it's fine, this is just a copy, okay? So nothing I do is going to affect the original. And once I have my copy, now I can go ahead and upload a new image. So right here where it says replace all images, I can click that and now I can pick my second design, which was my Christmas quilt, and it will upload that. Now it's gonna replace all of the um, images. I do have to change um, my title and tags and all of that for the new design. So whenever I copy it, I do have to go ahead and, you know, change everything. If I made several variations of a similar design where the title and tags may still be relevant, like if I did another sports design, then I might not really have to change anything. I might just leave it the same. But since this is a totally different style entirely, I do have to go ahead and rechange it. And so what I might put here is like a Christmas plaid pattern. Okay, and so again, I could put Christmas, all right, plaid, oops, pattern. Ooh. I could put the colors green, red, white, right? Um, it's sort of a quilted pattern, quilted, might look good. Could put holiday, winter, <clears throat> so anything like that, and then again, Christmas plaid pattern. Perfect. Now, as I come down here, it's automatically disabled everything I didn't want and it's got everything that I did want already enabled. And so now you can see 
everything's already got that pattern to it. So now if I wanted to, I can go ahead and change the sizes or, or center some of these. When I do have hard edges like this, it becomes sort of important that I center them. So what I can do is make sure that this line here is going straight down the center of the shirt, or I can offset it so that, you know, the, the center of it, uh, the center of the square is straight down the shirt, but I, I don't really want to offset. Um, and I can play with the size as well. So maybe, you know, I want it to be smaller. I want it to be bigger. I can play with all of that, but you can definitely, you know, see how this looks when we do that sort of quilted pattern here. It, it kind of gives it a, an interesting look. And now some of these I might decide, hey, look, that one, I need to make it a little smaller so I actually get the quilted look. And that's all I have to do to edit it would be edit and then shrink it down. And so now you can see it's really fast to go ahead and make any alternate alter, <laughs> alterations that I need to make. Um, everything looks pretty cool here. This one I might also shrink it down a little bit. Uh, it just kind of gives it this really cool look. Shrink that one down a little bit. Maybe bring it up so it's a little centered. Uh, keep going, play with this a little. And so you can see how I can jump through this really quick. I can make it real fast once I've just copied all of my settings. Again, mini skirt here. All right, looks good, looks good, looks good. I did want to show you when I got to the backpack. So here on the backpack, I've got it the original size, so you're getting this pattern. But what you can do if you wanted to, if I wanted to bring this up really, really big, let's say almost all the way to full size, I can <clears throat> try and line it up so that I've got one square on the pocket and another square on the back of the bag. And then it's gonna do different squares on each of the straps. So something sort of like, I do wanna line it right up with the top of the bag and then line it right up with the straps. So now you can see when I look, I'm gonna have this plaid on the back, this plaid on the bottom, and then the other ones are gonna be on the straps. And so you can kind of see the way that that looked and that's pretty cool. I mean, I can definitely change it. So let's say I just wanted to scooch that over and we'll try again. And now you look up and I've got this plaid on the bottom and this plaid on the top, and these are the straps. And so I can play with it however I want. I can bring it down here. And so you can see how you can sort of play with what you want where. Um, and so I think it probably looked best. What do we got? This one? That one probably looks best there. So something like that, you know. Again, you can play with anything you want, but that's how I went ahead and got some of those cool patterns on the backpacks in the last video that I showed you, how you can make the pocket one design and then the back of the backpack another, and it was just by doing this sort of square quilted design that I thought looks, you know, kind of gives some things a cool look there. And so now I've got it, I've got it on everything. That was really fast and easy. And when it comes to things like the comforter, it is gonna go ahead and give it a cool quilted look. I might wanna make it a little bit smaller here to give it more of a quilted pattern when it comes to the comforter. I also might wanna go ahead and, and try to line it up as best I can, either by making it a little bigger or a little smaller so that the edges are sort of as close to perfect as I can get. So something like that where nothing's really cut off too much, that's gonna look good right there. And so that's how I would go ahead and organize it and that's gonna give it a cool comforter look or a quilted comforter look. So now I can come all the way down to the bottom and I'll just do the same thing here. It's already on digital art. Here's where you might need to change your collection. So this wouldn't be sports for me anymore. This might fall under patterns or under holiday or something like that. I could leave it as a comforter or I could go ahead and select something else. So if I thought something else looked better than the comforter, I could do that. 
you know, the socks might look cool for Christmas or sometimes the pillows, however people might decorate. So you want to think about what your design is when you're, you know, picking what it is you want to showcase. You know, I think that that's a cool, you know, pillow or tote bag might look neat. Um, phone case might look cool. I kind of like the way that that looks on the phone case too. So, you know, pick whatever you think is is sort of the best display of your art and it might look good on a lot of different things. And so, you know, just go with whatever, whatever you think is best. I like to do a good variety too. So I, like I said, I don't do everything in a t-shirt. I make sure that some things are in, well, that I'm showcasing all the different products. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with a iPhone case here. And now I can go ahead and save work. I know this was kind of a long video, but I did want to go over how to upload everything again and just sort of show you. Um, this was much more abbreviated than my original Redbubble video on how to upload everything. That went over, you know, literally how to open up the settings on, on every one of these and make sure that everything's enabled. And so if you want a more detailed look on how to upload to everything, go ahead and look at my old Redbubble video. This one, it was specifically just to kind of show you how you can do that all over print pattern um, for some of these designs. Um, so again, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comment section below. If there's anything else that you want to see or that you want covered a little bit more detail, go ahead and let me know. As this week is Thanksgiving, I hope you guys are having a good Thanksgiving or had a good Thanksgiving by the time this is up. Um, yeah, um, we will get back to showing you some cool designs on Canva next week. Um, and so I think that's all I wanted to show you for this video. This week was all about sort of some of that red bubble stuff. But like I said, next week, we'll get back to doing some cool designs on Canva that you can go ahead and hopefully get some sales on, on Amazon um, or Amazon Merch On Demand, Etsy, Redbubble, and all those other different um, sites. So <clears throat> go ahead, uh, take care and have a happy holiday. That's all for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.